Happy National Napping Day, everybody, and welcome to Houston Life on this Monday, March 11th. I'm Derek Shore. I'm Courtney Savala. Hopefully you're enjoying your spring break on this first, like, full day of springing forward. I don't know. Second day? I don't know. I'm totally confused. Well, I guess today would be the first full day, right? Right. Since it all started yesterday morning, but I guess one of the reasons why today is the National Napping Day, which has been around for 20 years, by the way, is because everybody is so tired this morning. I feel it. Do ya? Yeah. But you don't look it. Oh, well, thanks. Smoke and mirrors, <laughs> Cecilia. Thank you. Upper hand. She does it all. Our, our makeup artist. Is um, so, lots of fun stuff that happened over the weekend. Yeah, your mom is in town. Eileen, sweet little Eileen. She's in town. And, um, you know, when the Hubs was away, we headed up to the Woodlands, to the Woodlands Resort over the weekend. It was fantastic. Oh, wow. fun. This was a very fancy dinner at Robards. Um, very cool. That's the um, photo of the Spruce Goose. Of course, Howard Hughes' middle name is Robard, and that's where this whole thing came about. That's but just a photo there? It almost looks like it's... Like we're uh, in it, right? Yeah. It's so, that's so incredible. That's the private dining room in Robards, the, the wine room there. And uh, we just had a, we see a photo opportunity and we take it. Um, but it was so great. We had such a wonderful time. And then um, <gasps> we went to the rodeo what, yesterday. What ride is this? Um, I don't know what the name of it was, but it's the one like there's four seats and then you kind of just flip through it. Uh, you like spin around you that thing where my mom's hand is on you spin the wheel and it goes your mom went on a carnival ride yeah she loved it man look at that that face, is if so that didn't cool say it. go I know. Eileen and a special thank you to chef Enzo also in the woodlands from um, Ceriso restaurant a fabulous experience on Saturday above is social uh, Como social lounge so such a great addition to the woodlands we had such a great time over the weekend you know we're going there this weekend are you Do we talk about this I'm serious, to go to the opening. It's so great. The grand opening's in a couple weeks, yeah. but we're going to go up uh, ahead of time. And Chef Enzo was so sweet, because AJ was super excited about looking into the kitchen and seeing basically how the tickets work, and, you know, they pull down the light to keep the food warm while the servers clean the plates and everything. He was totally into it, and Chef Enzo spent some time with us at the table and then took AJ, you showed him around in the kitchen. It was really great. That restaurant, y'all, in the Woodlands, get up there. Ceriso absolutely fantastic it's perfect for a little staycation i'm just so saying great. we all need to get a, away every once in a while you know one of the things i love about living in houston is it's so easy to get everywhere you know we're right in the yeah. middle of the country you can pop up to new york you can run to la chicago where you're from uh you were texting me pictures of you and your mom having champagne on friday night not me just eileen oh sorry to yeah. clarify it's lent and courtney has given up bubbles How's that going so far? It's tough, especially when you're sitting across from your mom and she's like, Nostrovia. She's, you know, giving me the cheers with the rosé bubbles. Thanks, Mom. Yeah, I know. It happens. You know what? Paybacks. <laughs> I do apologize to her all the time for my years between 13 and 20, so that was just one of those that she just... You were kind of a bad girl. Not really. Just difficult. Not so. I want to hear about your weekend, though. Okay, so I was... Uh, we jumped over to Miami on the Friday The 305. Afternoon. Nice. Yeah, and uh, we jumped on the plane. We got down there, spent a couple Hanging days on the Hanging out with some beach. ugly people, I see. You know, the worst people <laughs> in the world. Some of the nicest guys. That's Matt, my ex, in the middle on the top there, and he's one of my best friends. Of course, Brandon's there and our friends Brett and Jeff. But we had a great little weekend down there, great food. We, this is where we stayed, right on the water. On the sidewalk? Beautiful. We stayed on the <laughs> sidewalk. It's great these days. Get those little mini tents. Um, little camping pillow. You've got way more money to spend on dinner if you just sleep on the sidewalk. You know what? That's our travel strategy. Traveling on a budget on the next Houston Life. <laughs> Derek and Brandon show you how to sleep on the sidewalk. So, and one night after dinner. Oh, boy. Okay, it was just sprinkling. It truly was just sprinkling. And we thought, oh, you know, on our way back to our hotel, it was like a three-block walk. Why don't we just, you know, walk back? Sprinkle, sprinkle and a Dalish. downpour. It's like one of those rainstorms that hits Houston, you know, when you step outside and you're caught in an unexpected storm and it feels like you stepped into the shower. Yes. In your you clothes. Bring out your clothes. So we got back and let's just say, yeah, but it was a great getaway and uh, yeah, this morning, glad to, to get back. I know. Fun and to wake up in Miami. It's good to um, take a break wherever you are. Like if you can do that, if you can go far, or you can just take a, a break away from the kids in life. It's great. It kind of recharges the body, the soul, the mind, the whole night. True. Absolutely. It was great to land this morning, though, to the Houston humidity and to a great show coming up. I mean, yes. honestly, I was so excited to come to work today. And we do have a great show. Uh, it's a brand new week for many. When you start a new week, that is maybe sort of, I don't know, requiring a little bit of caffeine. <laughs> 
But if you're trying to just, you know, steer away from the caffeine, so many of those coffee drinks, you know, they're loaded with like cream and sugar, sugar. and calories and all that. Well, there is a new alternative if you want to swap that sugary drink with something a little healthier. We are learning today, Courtney Zavala, how to make three matcha recipes. You can do this at home. And our friend Julio from Coffee Q Truck, he's going to show us how to do it. It's going to be awesome. Plus, we are announcing the next winner of our boot giveaway. Find out who the lucky winner is a little bit later on in today's show. All right. But as we mentioned, today is National Napping Day. And whether you prefer to sleep on your side, your stomach, your back, when it comes to body language, what does your sleep position reveal about your relationship? Body language expert and author Jan Hardgrave is here to break it all down for us. Jan Hardgrave! Welcome back! Welcome to Thank Houston. You. Oh. Hi, babe. Here, I'm going to help you oh, into my your chair. chair here. Here Hello. I am. You're looking great as always. Oh, you look Thank wonderful. You. Thank you. Are you ready to talk about this sleeping? I am Absolutely. ready for it. Yes, I'm ready to. There's always something to look into as far yeah. as like how we sleep, which is right. very interesting. Well, you know, everything we do with our bodies indicate what's going on in our lives. And even when we're sleeping, our sleeping patterns can say if we had a rough day, if we're in good cahoots with our partner at that time. And, excuse me, sometimes we start off in a certain position and then we change to another another position but if you start analyzing we don't think about it because we spend 15 percent of our time sleeping but if you think about it and you know each of us has a favorite little way that we sleep whether we want to control the bed and take it over this way or we want to get into like a fetal position this way so all of this indicates something about sometimes fears that we have sometimes anxieties that we have about the next day also, even the side that you sleep on can indicate what kind of dreams you're going to have. And oh. it goes back to right brain, left brain information. Okay. So if you're sleeping on your right brain, which is the creative and the fun side, you're less likely to have a nightmare. What? Yes, I know. And that's I'm a crazy. Right side sleeper. I'm a little bit of a left side. Yeah. If you sleep on the left side, which is um, mostly science and, and studies and histories, this is our complicated side. So you're more likely to have intricate dreams and complicated dreams and you're running and you're hiding you know, I mean, if you sleep on the left side but then think of, let me tell you this other thing if you sleep on your left side it's better for your body because you're yeah. not pressure putting pressure on your liver so you can kind of get all confused but you can sleep one night on one way and you sleep the next night on the next way so if you sleep on your right side more of your organs and your blood circulation is good if you sleep on your left side if i'm complicating this whole thing in a minute but just think about the brain right. side when you're right. sleeping Interesting. I know. Now you're uh, like, where, why do I sleep? Why, okay, so, so <laughs> I know. standing up. Uh, yeah, that is really surprising. That says something to me. too. If you sleep oh. this way too. It Let's does. talk about relationships. Okay. Yes. Because when you are in bed with your partner, and I'm assuming your sleep style can evolve over time. Right. What you've done today, Jan, is you've broken it down into several sure. um, common sleeping styles. Right. And I think we have a little graphic so we can show each of them. Um, the first one is uh, the leg scoop yeah. and. That's the yeah, leg scoop. Kind right of like there. a leg leg loop. It's a leg loop. Oh, the leg loop. And really loop. in this go. situation, the one they both would should be on their backing and back in this description. And when people just lock something in the lower part of their bodies together, underneath the knees, underneath the knees, let's make sure we say that. Right. Then it's a comfortable relationship. It's really a good friendship there. There's still something of themselves touching each other during the night, and they're not having to be around each other so much. But still, it's a good friendship. It's a healthy relationship. They can make decisions without asking too much of the other or the person it's probably one of the healthiest ways to sleep instead of being all cuddled up together it's just that you have a little part of yourself touching because when you touch it does give out this healthy hormone yeah. that that you know kind of makes you feel a little bit closer to that person and just but, reassuring them like hey, right I'm still here I'm still we don't here. have to be like and even if it's a hand or an right. arm it could be just any a slight touch or maybe the two legs against each other in the bed is a good thing too this is very interesting how do you sleep with your husband I cannot I, I have to you cannot very touch him? Question. No. <laughs> yeah. I, I have to be very, like, I mean, maybe like a hand touch or something like that. Yeah. I get hot. I feel yeah. suffocated. I'm a little more like, okay, good night. How were you when you first slept with your husband, you first married him? I have no idea. That was 150 years what? ago. You don't remember? <laughs> I don't remember. It was 100 yeah. years ago. I know. Sometimes years. we don't. It's tough to remember. I think but I, I'm going to say I was exactly the same you way. You think so? Yeah, well, it's okay. I, it's yeah, okay. I think I was exactly the same way. The only thing uh, is if you start off in bed completely facing away from each other all the time, all the time, all the time, then it could say that 
you know, maybe there's not there's some animosity that's going on between the two of you. But because every night, you know, normally at night they will face each other, say good night, and maybe have a, you know sleep well, and then turn on your own. That's more of a healthy relationship. But yeah. if you just call in and immediately get on your own side and face, oh no, the other we side. solve the world's yeah. problems. Oh, you, you solve the I mean? world's problems have, we together. Chat, we decompress. And, okay. You know, okay. Talk. Yeah. Yeah. Pillow talk. Jan, is it true that uh, oftentimes the man or the more dominant one in the relationship will sleep closer to the yes. door of yes. the room? Yes, and that goes back to the caveman mentality because the if you the man who slept closer to the door protected everyone else in that home. Mm -hmm. So then, when a man and wife are sleeping, or husband and wife, wife and wife, you know, the one who is more the protector in the relationship is going to sleep close to the door. So that's why they say even when you go on a vacation and you rent a room in a hotel, that you should sleep in the exact same positions that you, you would at your home. own home because a lot of times you get into the hotel maybe you just nonchalantly take one of the sides and can't understand why the bed is so comfortable but yet why you had a terrible night's sleep is because you were not in the same so if your partner sleeps on the right of you at home he or she should sleep on the right of you anywhere yeah. that you are i try to do that but then like what if the wall is right there i'm afraid i get up in the middle of the night you know yeah. and i've smacked myself into yeah. that wall yes <laughs> well, you need a night light for that well what it, what does that say about your relationship Courtney? you know what that says one too many martinis that's what that says okay we need we need to move along to number okay. two because number two is uh old-fashioned spoon Oh, a spooning. spoon, of course. Everybody spoons. And you first, probably when you first got married, you spoon. Probably. And well, I think we probably still In do. the spooning position, the one who's in the back and the one doing the spooning is probably the one who is the most uh, uh, independent and the most confident about the relationship. The one who's being spooned is the one who most or, more so needs more protection and, and reassurance that this relationship will work well. And that, you know, sometimes people will stay this way the whole night, too. The oh, whole no. way, you know. Really? I, and then... Yeah, so people. Like, I mean, we do. We we spoon like we turn. You all, turn over, and all so night then long. that's good that but, you do. But isn't that bad? It may be a great indicator for our closeness in our relationship. Yeah. But can it also disrupt your spouse's sleep? Because I mean, literally, Brandon turns over, I turn over, I yeah. turn over, he turns over all night long. Yeah. That's what we do. Can't do but that. you feel rested in the morning when you wake up? Never. Well, then that means you need to more so stay in one little position. Because kids, you know, the ones who just move around all night long, you're still sleeping like a child would be sleeping, Derek. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Number three is the Rome Zone. We'll okay. That last comment the there. Rome the zone. Rome Zone. What is that? Where they start all, all away from each other. Well, in this position that we see here, the one in the yellow is more the, you know, kings sleep on the back, wise men sleep on their sides, and rich people sleep on their stomachs. Okay, so let's say that again. What? Um, I'm a so, I'm a backside sleeper. What is so that? So a mean? backside sleeper. Well, you're a wise person then. Okay. But in that one that we just saw, whoever's taking the most space in the bed is usually the one who feels more that they are in command and control, and they're like in a king position. And the one who's more, you know, close is either sometimes insecure or not they don't as have confident. Any room. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> they have to cuddle up into a ball into a little, yeah. before they fall right off that mattress. <laughs> But there are many, many ways that people sleep, but still it is an indicator of how you feel you've dealt with the problems that you had to come up with that day and how you feel you're going to deal with the problems that come in come into contact with you tomorrow because those people who sleep completely in the fetal position yeah. and some people even sleep, you know, on their Flinched. faces with their back to the, to the, you know, just to yeah. the wall. On that their means faces? Well, I'm People crouching. People sleep on their face. Yeah, yeah. I'm crouching like we would never, because we did not would not no, want to destroy our faces. That's sleeping on my back. Me too. Jello style. Me so. too. But people who sleep like this and their back is to the wall, think of what that says, their back is to the wall, they're, they're, they're not even comfortable in their sleeping because they're, they're so anxious about having to get back into the workforce yeah, the next day. Go. Yeah, they Yeah, they're like this it. and they're too anxious. So we have to learn to kind of just let go and be, be more comfortable. You know, even sleeping this way is a good, good way too if you're on your back. But every way that you sleep indicates what's going on really in your life and how comfortable you are with your partner too. Very interesting. Oh my goodness, this is fascinating. And the whole like protect your liver, sleep on, yeah, no. or was it your kidneys? No, it was what your was liver. It, oh, it was your, your liver. liver. I also heard when you when you are uh, stuffed up, if you sleep on your left, it clears the nasal passages. It could be something to do with some kind of where, where did anatomy. You hear that? I don't remember, but AJ's like the other day is like, Mom, which side? Which side? I can't breathe. And I was like, left, go left. Go left. So. But the thing you remember is this. If you want to have a pleasant night, nighttime dream sleep on your right if you want to have a complicated maybe solve a problem that's going on in your life make sure that your face is face is on your left side okay
Good advice. Okay, um, why don't we take a quick commercial break and then continue this conversation? Because okay. this is really fascinating, Jan. We love On National you here. Napping Day. On yes. National Napping Day. Do we I have know. time for a quick one minute nap? I know, I think we do. We'll be right back. We're going to nap. <laughs> We are back with body language expert and author and our friend, Jan Hargrave. By the way, she's a very busy lady. You've been on the speaker circuit. Right. So we're glad to have you here at Houston Life. And on this National Napping Day, we've been discussing so far what our sleep styles mean about our relationships. Right. So far, I'm very intrigued. We have a few more positions yes. to get to. And these are fun ones, okay? okay fun yeah. ones. The first one is the booty bond. Oh, do you love that one? I do. When I don't, the, I don't know. Do what do is it? it? The, when, when, oh, the two booties are touching. That's actually my favorite dance move. It is your favorite dance move, but it's probably one of the best ways to sleep because, but these people, it's like independence, independence, independence is what they're showing. That one could even buy a car without even telling the other person they're going to buy a car. That's how independent this kind of sleeping style is. Doesn't that get you in, I mean, not trouble, but like, I think if you're gonna make a big financial. Yeah, I know, but right? this is what it, it says. But like, they're like, just basically but, saying. But they're joined at the hip about, you know, childhood raising and all that. They kind of think alike, but yet they are big, strong, respective of their own careers and can make big executive decisions alone. But how is this different, though, booty, from, from, booty the, from the leg loop that you did earlier? Leg loop is more comfortable in the relationship. It, These mean, are more independent touching... people in the relationship. But why would they stick their booties together? I don't know. But, I mean, That's haven't just, you ever, you I know? Mean, right? Am I yeah. the only one wondering this thing right <laughs> but now? But it is a position. And they're uh, away from each other. They're right? facing away from each other, independent kind of thinking, but still have one little area of touching. It's just a, I don't know, but it's just one of the positions <laughs> that we've researched. Just the way it is. Just the way it is, but you could try it tonight and see if you can go buy a car tomorrow by yourself. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay, what is the next one? The regal pose. Okay, you know what that one is. On that's the, the one that sleeps like this. Okay. But if they sleep like this and the arms are out, that's the regal pose. If they sleep like this and the arms are to their sides, that's more of a regimented pose. Po pose. Because think about it, this is like a soldier. You see you see this this way? Oh. So with the hand behind the head, this is confidence. See the one sleeping? And then Very you have... Game of Thrones. And then you have someone nuzzling in. So the person more so nuzzling in is the one who wants to feel that they're loved that day or that evening and that maybe something happened, made them upset, and so they're right. holding on to that person. And what you're saying earlier, Jan, that if someone's like really spreading out or putting their legs out, yeah. like that's a sign of dominance? It is saying? a sign, because it's like, I'm gonna take up all this space in the bed because I take up all this space in the business world. My mic just fell off. Oh. I'm, I'm gonna pick that up. Oopsie. What does that mean, Jan? That, if what do you, your mic suddenly falls off during It's live, perfectly live okay, because you're having fun and you want to talk about this sleep position just a bit more. Okay, so the newlywed position, we mentioned earlier that sleep yeah. styles can sort yes. of evolve throughout the course of someone's relationship. Yeah. And when someone is newly married, they're more likely to spoon and be close? Yes, to spoon face, no, face each other. And share just, oxygen. Oh, look, you see, share oxygen is correct, yeah. Courtney. But it usually lasts only nine months. Isn't that something? that they stayed that tightly, because I mean, it, it helped, you can't sleep well that way that much, you don't have your own breathing area, but when people first get married and, and they're, they're dating in a relationship, it's gonna last about nine months, but if it, has, if it has lasted longer than the nine months and all of your years of marriage, more power to you, because it's a really strong lovey-dovey relationship. That's really interesting. Who, how are we getting this information? Because I, I have slept in all these positions <laughs> in my life. No. no, I know, I'm teasing you. <laughs> Just from it's the research, really... anthropologists are really in with animals and the studies yeah. of positions that people take and the body language. It's pretty reflective of the body language that we do in our everyday life. Because right. if, a, if a guy's sitting in a meeting and sitting there with both hands on, you know, on top of the head, this is really confident, almost too confident if you're talking to a person this way. So, yeah. And the more space you take in a, in a business chair, in a meeting room, the more powerful you can look to others. So it's the same way in your life because in meetings, you know, men can more so spread out, and ladies, we tend to sit kind of like what you're sitting now, which is really non-confrontation because we kind of get into this little bub bubble here. That's so, also the way I'm sitting right now. I just well, so like when, but when I coach women who are leading maybe an executive meeting, I say, you know, expand your gestures a bit because the more expanded your gestures are, the more powerful you will appear to others. Because if I'm in a meeting room like this, nobody's going to really listen to me. Or they're not so, going to look at you either. No, because you feel almost invisible, and they think that you're invisible. So the same things that occur in the business 
world of body language can occur in the sleeping world of body and language. How much of this is really conscious versus versus subconscious? Uh, the sleeping is subconscious. Yeah, sleeping is subconscious. Just, yeah, you but just. It, but in the boardroom, if a guy is putting his hands yeah. up like this, though, is that a conscious thing or is that just like innate? Uh, in our well, DNA? I think it's a conscious thing because at the moment it's concerning about what he's thinking. He's thinking, well, I don't even want to listen to these people, so I'm gonna just sit back and kind of relax. It's called the king of the castle. It doesn't doing. matter what they're yeah. saying anyway. So it is right? a pretty conscious thing when we're doing it when we're awake. But not when we're sleeping. I'm thinking back to all the times this has happened to me in a meeting. I know. Uh -huh. It's so not so if you want to take over the room. I mean, just spread your arms further, your leg. Don't open your legs too much, but, you know, just kind of spread your arms out a bit more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so back to relationships. Jan, uh, you just celebrated your one-year anniversary. Oh, my gosh, your yes, I did. Cecil. They've yes. been together 20 years, by the way. Yes. And have you noticed over the course of your 20-year relationship that your sleep style has evolved? And are... Are there yes. any signs that people should take note of that might worry them? Anything that should would be worry looking, them? Yeah, or indications of infidelity yeah. or stress on the relationship? Well, I think with us, you know, we, we have just maybe hand touching or foot touching. We've always kind of been that way, and we still do that. I don't know if it just makes us feel secure. And I remember I said the, the touch of someone is soothing to you, and mm -hmm. it's like in a, nur in a nurse at a hospital, you know, and they touch you or a doctor and say that everything's going to be okay. It's kind of that same feeling that you get, you know that person's there and so you said is there a way that you could tell if there's some trouble coming up in the relationship sense, like let's say you're well, a spooner with your yeah. partner and, and then, then one, one day, day yeah. no spooning. spooning I'd and then maybe get some new underwear I would start worrying about the relationship <laughs> you know because you know if, maybe they're if, if they're dress getting it up yeah they're starting dressing up you know and think going to Nordstrom getting some new underclothing and things and come to bed you know I don't know if they you know if you start taking yourself taking care of yourself a lot better than you used to and it's noticeable to your partner just not necessarily you're doing it for your partner you know you're thinking you might be doing it for someone else and that sounds complicated but i don't want people to start getting worried about the relationship that their husband gets new underwear but i'm just saying you know if it's totally totally different from the way you've been sleeping and they get in that position over and over again now I, there might be some arguments that are going on maybe right. some insecurities there i would kind of talk about it Okay, but maybe communication a, is key, and maybe a little spoon would, you know, help. Do a body a good. Spoon, maybe even yeah. a fork, you uh, know. <laughs> maybe. Dan, you are always so much fun to have on the show. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for making time for us here You're at welcome. Houston Life. And as always, if you would like to keep up with Jana for more info on couples, sleep styles, and what it means for your relationships, you can visit our website, HoustonLife.tv. Always great to see you, Jan. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for coming in. Okay, coming up, if you haven't filed your taxes yet, don't worry. After the break, the tips you need to know to help you prepare for tax day. It's a coming. You know, we, do we get crazy? <laughs> If you have not yet filed your taxes, you officially have just over a month left. I know. Get on it. Ready or not, April 15th is right around the corner. Here with tips to help us prepare for tax day is Private Wealth Advisor with Ameriprise Financial, Trevor Shakiba and Kevin Jenkins of Jenkins & Associates. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, thank Happy you. Monday. Yes. As we know, time is ticking. We've got to prepare. Yeah, so that's my first point is, look, rip the band-aid off yes. uh, get organized don't procrastinate it's going to come the deadline is April 15th and I guess you could file an extension but okay. you, you really don't want to do that if you don't have to my other tip here is to definitely give your tax professional time so don't come to them on the uh, you know April 14th with a shoebox of receipts <laughs> and some random statements me? <laughs> I mean you really want to give them the opportunity to, to you know do the appropriate due diligence to find everything they possibly can to save you money in taxes all right, and Kevin, uh, Trevor just mentioned the extension thing. Yeah. A lot of people, I think, still suffer from some confusion. <laughs> an extension doesn't mean an extension to pay. That's it's right, an yeah. an extension to file. Yeah, a lot of people think if you'd file that extension, I can put off paying the government, you know, their money that they're owed in April. No, they're going to tack on a little bit of a penalty if you do that. So it's best to, if you don't have everything together and you're worried that it's going to be incomplete or incorrect, go on and file the extension, but just know you might have to pay a little bit more. And the point on the screen, I think, is very valid. It's better to file that extension if you're not sure, yeah. you know, if you haven't collected all of your receipts and all that. But I think it also underscores, Trevor, your point. You don't procrastinate because ultimately that costs you money. Yeah, absolutely. And, and as I'm always talking about, that money could be better elsewhere, making you money, hopefully. Absolutely. Okay, and let's move on to the IRA accounts. 
uh, that we have to look at for tax season? Yeah, so this is probably the most obvious and easiest. You can contribute to IRAs for last year up to April 15th of this year. And so remember the maximums for last year are 5,500 if you're under 50, and if you're over, it's another thousand. So it'd be a total of 6,500. It's a little bit complicated. You just don't automatically get to do it though, and that's why you'd wanna work with the appropriate CPA like Kevin. If you already are participating in a 401k, it may not make sense to do a traditional IRA. And so again, not to get too far off in the weeds, but you have the ability to contribute. It can make sense a lot of the time, but sometimes you need to be careful on what you do there. Having a good CPA is seriously, it, <laughs> it takes all the headaches out, right? Kevin, let's talk about using last year's taxes as sort of a like a guide for yeah. this year's taxes. Yeah, especially with the tax law changes, you know, a lot of people, they had a different situation this year. Maybe they owed when they didn't expect to, or they got a little bit less back than they thought they would. Uh, you can adjust those withholdings, you know, based off of what happened last year and maybe pay a little more in, or if you got a huge refund, you know, take some of that throughout the year. And you would just like go to your HR department yeah. essentially and yep. fill out a new W-4 and then they'll, they'll adjust your paycheck each week or month or, you know, to, to reflect that. Well, hopefully this will jumpstart people's filing for this year and then start thinking ahead, Trevor. That's the way to do it. Don't be the buzzer beater, you know, like where you're getting down to 1159. Oh, let's file. That was yeah. always me, uh, me driving too. to the post office to get it postmarked <laughs> yeah. on the day. Always. Oh, horrible. But when you're doing this for, you know, last year's taxes, you want to think about what's going to going to come every year at the same yeah. time so yeah. think ahead so that's uh, a great point and, and really what I'm talking about here is you want to be proactive not reactive a lot of the opportunities happen earlier in the year and so this is a big big pet peeve of mine it's not just about saving taxes but it's also looking to the future and maybe positioning yourself a little bit better from a tax perspective so think about contributing after tax to a, a Roth 401k think about Roth IRAs or even conversion strategies um, it's a, I'm a big proponent of saving after tax, and so the tax rates are lower this year, which could be advantageous to convert some money from a traditional IRA to a Roth. Again, working with the, the, the CPA hand-in-hand -hand here can really, really be beneficial. Also, this time of year, I mean, it's horrible, but all of these IRS scams start yeah. popping up all over the place. And Kevin, yeah. what are some of the scams that people should watch for? Yeah, I'm hearing more and more about it, unfortunately. But, you know, the IRS is never going to call you on the phone and demand money, demand payment right away. And especially they're not going to want you to pay them in a gift, gift card, a Walmart gift card, you know. <laughs> uh, so yeah, <laughs> don't, don't click on any emails that look suspicious. They're not going to email you, you asking you to f fill out a form online or anything. Those people are just trying to get your information to, in some cases, file a tax return before you file and get a bunch of money back. Yeah, and oh, that's wow. super simple to do. I mean, obviously, don't open it anyway, yeah. but um, you can also click on the uh, email address. Yep. And typically, if it looks valid, if it's coming from, like, a government or even a banking situation, yeah. when you go back, that email address is, is completely different to what you think it's going to uh, be represented. If you ever have a question, just call the IRS. If somebody calls you harassing you, hang up and call them and ask them if there's any problem or call your CPA. And what are some of the best ways, guys, for people out there, I'm sure many of you are collecting receipts and all that, do people still show up with like a shoebox full of receipts? What's the best way people can stay organized and on top of their expenses throughout the year? Some people do. They, they still do the shoebox method, but I, I discourage that. Uh, spreadsheets or, uh, you know, a, a personal finance software, those, those are always going to be the best where you can just spit out a report. You know, keep keep up with it during the year is the main the main goal. And the IRS does accept electronic copies of receipts, right? So if you yes. have a receipt, you can always take a photo right. and keep that yep. even just stored in your phone. Yeah, right? and some softwares, if you take a picture of the receipt, it'll automatically upload it to the software as you know X Y Z expense. Are there any good apps for that? Do we know? Uh, <laughs> no, don't do it. I don't want to endorse any. Uh, right. I mean, just really. Keeping track of all there the are, information, there are. spreadsheets probably the easiest yeah, way. Yeah, apps to do and that. spreadsheets. And okay. Well, and Trevor, we love when you come to visit us, and Kevin, we love having you here as well. But I think the the underlying theme with all of your segments is that you got to make a plan, don't procrastinate, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, look, when it when it comes to financial planning, the sooner you get started, the better. And the same thing with taxes. You don't want to just be randomly haphazardly going to your CPA. And again, back to my last point. There's a lot of advantages to proactively be thinking about things, not reacting. And so whether that's Roth conversion strategies or saving in after tax, that can really put you in a better situation for financial independence and retirement.
Okay, Trevor Shakiba, Kevin Jenkins, thank you thank guys you. for stopping thank by. You. Thanks for all the advice. And if you would like to connect with Kevin, you can visit his website at JenkinsCPAS.com. And if you'd like more information on financial planning or a complimentary consultation with Trevor and the Shakiba Group, you can call 281-724-9917 or visit the Shakibagroup.com. All right, still ahead on Houston Life, one of our viewers is going home with a brand new pair of Justin cowboy boots. Will it be you? Find out right after this. Thank you. Since the very first Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo back in 1932, more than $475 million have been given to young people in Texas. Well, recently the chairman of scholarship administrations, along with the scholarship recipients, stopped by to help us understand just how life-changing these gifts can be. Thank you so much for being here. And by the way, thank you for volunteering because you've been a volunteer um, for 32 years. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. and. This does not happen without the volunteers, and especially the, the biggest part of all of this is all about scholarships. It is, it's, it's large. We love what we do out there, though. Everybody contributes. There's 33,000 volunteers that put into getting these uh, life-changing scholarships. That is staggering. Kids. Well, and you have a day job, so you arrange your schedule, your flight attendant for Delta Airlines, but you take a full month off so that you can be there for rodeo to volunteer. Why have you done this for so long? What is it about the rodeo that keeps you coming back every year? You know, I, my friends are out there now, but <laughs> it, it, is, it fills my heart. Every day out there, I find joy. I truly do. It's, we're giving back to the community. We're changing lives. We are, we're teaching people discipline, the kids that uh, are out there showing horses. There's so much out there. And they've it's, all become your family. Come on now, they, right? <laughs> Yes. And Echo, I'm so glad you, you jumped in because you're a recipient from the scholarship from 1998. 20 years ago. I mean, how did that affect you at that time to, to be able to have that money? I mean, it was huge. I was a small town from a farming, ranching community. I'd been in 4-H um, for a long time in my life, and I applied. Um, it sent me to college, and I got out with no college debt, which That's huge. not many people are able to do. Right, or say. <laughs> and you were accepted to West Point, the Air Force Academy, Auburn University, but you decided, good choice, Texas A&M. Texas A&M. You graduated after just three years. I did. But you sort of, uh, you know, changed your path along the way. You decided maybe med school was not the path for you. So and what happened instead? I ended up working for a small company that got purchased and acquired by Warner Brothers, and I've spent the last 10 years at Warner Brothers. Working in Hollywood, folks. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's a small kid, right? Not what most probably would assume of a scholarship recipient from the Houston Livestock Show. And that's what's interesting, too, to trace the roots back. I mean, working in Hollywood, working for one of the most well-known companies in the world, tracing the roots back to rodeo. I mean, safe to say that the scholarship you received from the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, that affected your life in a big way. Absolutely it affected my life in a big way. And now here I am, and I'm back in Houston, able to be part of the rodeo because I wasn't growing up when I received the scholarship even. And you never w know what is going to come in your path, what the Lord's going to provide. Absolutely. I think that is so great. And Trisha, wa walk us through the process because I know there's parents out there. I've got young boys. I'm like, how does this work? <laughs> how can we get in on notes. this? You know, so how do you do it? There is it, uh, there's an online application that everybody must fill out. It opens in November and it is due by the beginning of February, and then all the supplemental documents that su support that have to be in the rodeo, at the uh, rodeo office by February 14th this year. And uh, anybody can apply. That is something that a lot of people don't know. Everybody thinks that you have to have a horse or a cow to apply, but you do not. Everybody in Houston that is a graduating senior can apply for a Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo uh, scholarship. And I understand that it's not just about grades. When, when taking into account someone's accomplishments, a young person's accomplishment, you want to know their volunteer hours, a, a lot of extracurricular activities that are also taken into consideration. Is that right? We do take that into consideration. We take their activities, but we also have started taking their job experience because some of these kids that need scholarships need to work for their families. So if they don't have that many activities, but they're working for full-time jobs or part-time jobs, we have to take that into consideration as well. I think it's so awesome. How great is this for you, Echo, to be back here and being part of all of this? This is so awesome. And it's really exciting. I now have a little one that's two, and so she's, her favorite thing is rodeo, especially to go see 
all of the animals and the babies that are in the nursery that are there. Um, and the opportunity to be in Houston and be able to give back to what was given so much to me and now looking for what's next for my career in Houston. That's so fantastic. awesome. And has it also inspired you to give back as well? Oh, absolutely. When you're not in Houston, you don't understand rodeo. <laughs> right. Because rodeo, we were talking about, it. it's not just a place that you go to see everything. It's the culture. It's the life. It's the family. It's all of the things that you want to see in something. Houston comes together. It is just amazing and so much fun absolutely and you got to get out there i know like everybody wants to go to the concerts and the carnival but the bottom line is all of those fun things is the whole sole reason for those scholarships that's how it's all funded basically but and all the fun parties leading up to it, it it's so much fun but you know one thing that i was talking to one of my friends is that everybody in houston contributes if you yeah. buy a hot dog out there right. you contribute as much as you if you buy a steer out there <laughs> so everybody contributes i'm definitely buying hot dogs <laughs> I mean, a steer could come in handy, too. Courtney. I know. I don't yes, roll in those crowds, man. I don't roll in that crowd. Trisha and Echo, thanks to you both for your time today. Trisha, thank you for your 32 years of thank volunteerism. You. Absolutely. Thank and Echo, you. congrats on your family and your career and continued success to you as well. As always, if you would like more information on all things rodeo, you can just visit the scene on Houston Life section of our website. We'll be right back. Welcome back. If you've been trying to cut down on caffeine, have you thought about trying matcha? It's a Japanese green tea leaf that is a powerful antioxidant and a natural source of energy. It's also good for boosting your metabolism. Our friend Julio from Coffee Q Food Truck is in the studio with three matcha drink recipes we can all make at home. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So matcha is becoming pretty popular, right? Very, yep. Very popular. It's a good alternative to uh, coffee. It has a lot of great things for you. Uh, gives you natural energy, uh, boosts the metabolism, great thing to drink. So and is it, does it have a flavor to it or uh, not really? Very much. Uh, so the good thing about the tea is that you can mix it with different, uh, different drinks. Okay. Uh, to give it a flavor, but it's pretty much a green tea and it tastes. Yeah, you have to like add grainy, it. Okay. So it's Okay. That's why we're going to mix it today, but yes, it, it, it does taste like a green tea. So sort of a green tea flavor, and w what is our energy level going to be? Because I know you said that it has these antioxidants, it'll boost your energy, mm -hmm. but is it loaded with caffeine like Not coffee loaded, is? Very natural, very healthy energy. Uh, with the, You know, me loving coffee, I, I, we do coffee, but this is a good afternoon. Instead of having a second cup, you can always go to a matcha tea. Yeah, a little pick-me-up. Okay. Perfect for the 1 p.m. hour. All right, should we get started? Of course. So right now we're going to be working on uh, the matcha base. Okay. And I have two different bowls for you. Uh, one of them is going to be sweetened. So Derek, you're going to be making the one with sugar. Okay. And, and then the matcha just comes in a powdered form. It does. Okay. It's uh, so it's a fine ground, uh, fine ground, and that's how it comes. Okay. So All right. So let me uh, add a little uh, a hot water in there. So we're going to do about two ounces. And you're gonna do five scoops of that matcha. Oh, five scoops. Mm -hmm. Okay. A little bit uh, s smaller than that. L okay. <laughs> <laughs> so or maybe four scoops five? then. Yes, both. Okay. And then on yours, Derek, you're gonna add two scoops of sugar. Okay, so we'll sweeten it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And if someone's curious about this and they wanna try it at home, where would they find matcha powder? Whole Foods, Amazon is a great way to buy different types. Uh, so this is the one that I, I, I carry. Okay. And it's, uh, it's culinary, very fine, organic. Was okay. I supposed to use this? Yes. That okay. Is, that oh, is I didn't even ask. Use the whisk. Okay. Okay. So the whisk sort of breaks up the uh, little bits of matcha. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Usually oh, that okay. process right there takes about two to three minutes. Nice and smooth. And then what you want to do is add it to five ounces of water, which I put the water in there for you. The water right here is cold. Okay. And the water that I put in the bowl was hot. Okay. So let me go ahead and oh. open this for you. You know what? I can smell it. It almost it has does. like a, a grassy uh, scent right, to right it. Ahead. Okay. Yeah, it kind of smells like grass, like when, yeah, you, when you mow the, the lawn. It's like freshly cut grass. Right. Okay. And then if you want to add that in there. I'm just adding a little bit of sugar okay. to mine, right? Yes. As you said, Julio. Okay. And now Perfect. Add this to the water. Okay, so once we've added this, what comes next? Look how beautiful All right, so now, uh, Magic of TV, we have our matcha base already made that I made Perfect. Uh, earlier. Perfect. And you guys are going to help me make uh, three different drinks. Okay. The first one's going to be an almond milk matcha latte. Uh, and Derek, would you help me with that? Let's yeah. go ahead and add that to the cup. Okay. I've, I've already pre-measured it for you. So the whole thing goes in? The whole thing goes in there. Almond. And then after that, we add the base. Perfect. Okay. And then after that, we're going we're gonna to add ice at the end. But You're it kidding. was just halfway That's there. It. 
Yep. So that's all there is to it. Coconut water. Okay, for that's mine. That's the middle one. Yep. Okay. And then we add this. Awesome. So once you have the matcha base then, and you've mixed that with a bit of water, mm -hmm. then it can be made into a variety of you can keep drinks. it. You can keep it in the refrigerator. All you got to do is mix it up a little bit before serving it, and you can mix it with different things, oh, like nice. almond milk and coconut water. What's and this? And the last one? one is the lemonade. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's going to really give it a different right. flavor. And How long does it stay good too? If someone makes a batch at home, they're keeping it in the in the refrigerator. Probably like three to four days. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it does get grainy. It is a fine ground, so it, it does uh, have a. It does like settle. A su okay. It, yeah, it, it settles. So you just got to mix it again. Yeah. Okay. So at this moment, we would add the ice. On all of them. On all of this them. This one here. Oh, just add a little bit. Perfect. Mm. Like a matcha almond milk latte. Yeah. And if someone wanted to make just like a like a dairy latte, if they wanted to add whole milk, they could do that, right? You could do a whole milk, and you can actually. And you know, right now it's, it's getting warmer, so we're doing ice drinks. But uh, we, uh, you can also make these hot. Okay. So you can actually steam the milk at home boil it, and then add the matcha base to it. Okay. And then you guys uh, ordered some drinks earlier, so I went ahead and made that. This is a matcha lemonade for you, Derek. Oh, nice. Very nice. And this is a coconut matcha with a splash of almond milk. Okay. A little hydrating because of the coconut, right? Cheers. Cheers. Tell me what you think. Oh, wow. That is oh, delicious. That is really good. And I was telling you earlier, I was a little nervous about the, the coconut, coconut water mm -hmm. because it makes me feel like I'm drinking suntan lotion. So I don't really like it, but it's so good for you. But this is perfect. Perfectly sweetened. I love it. Refreshing, the yeah. coconut water. Julio, thank you so much. Uh, cheers, my friend. Good cheers. to see you. Cheers. Thank you for having me again. All right, oh, folks. Levy Park, all week, Coffee Q Truck. Just shout out. We'll be right back. It, it is really, really good. It's very good. You like it? Yeah. So you Coming up tomorrow on Houston Life, St. Patrick's Day Crafts, if you want to help keep the kids entertained over spring break. Yeah, a little something to do, plus a little something for the adults, how to make a Lucky Charms milkshake and other festive adult-only cocktails. Look at that thing. Uh, it looks so over the top. Was that like a macaroon cookie on top? I don't know. I want one for each hand. I'm sure we can arrange that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us today on this Monday, National Napping Day. Is it time? Oh, I hope so, folks. Hope you're napping. Hope. Right after this. Right now. See you tomorrow.